And we are live back again on Christmas Eve for another episode of On the King's Dime. The round two, we're going through round 12 tonight. It's a little bit later, so we uh, might get a little uh, frisky, but we'll just fall asleep because we're old men now. But uh, (laughs) yeah, it's good to be back for another episode. Uh, Andy's here. We had, to, uh, we had to sneak this one in between family duties and festivities, so this was the uh, only co- time we could do it. Yeah, but, uh, I was just saying before we started, like, it's hard. You grow up, you love Christmas. Christmas is great, and then you kind of hit, like, a, a grey area where you're just like, eh. And then you have kids, and you're like, oh, no, but now I'm on the other side of Christmas. I've actually got to do things for them. That's like, ah. Oh. And I'm yes. sure, like, in about five or six years when they're old enough, it's going to get to a stage where you're like, yeah, I'm into this now. Like, I'm giving them Christmas. How good is this going to be? But uh, another one, another year in the books. We've got, uh, we're counting down to the end of the year, end of the decade. There's plenty going on. As always, like, share, subscribe along the bottom here. Facebook, on YouTube, I'll be putting these up. I should take the uh, iTunes and Podcast Addict down <laughs> because they are not going up there at the moment. But we'll, we'll eventually work out a solution to get them up as soon as we can and we are on twitter and we have a patreon here too so if you are feeling in the uh, christmas spirit feeling generous throw us a couple of dollars our way we will uh put it towards hosting the podcast uh because yeah that's that's our goal is to get, get some crowdfunding to host a audio version of the podcast so you can listen to it on itunes and stuff like that we were doing it on Podbean, but that's not happening they suck. Now because they suck yeah. it just won't let me upload anymore uh, so round 12 in the books, uh, 1-1 split, Brisbane, weird performance in Brisbane, a little bit bizarre, that performance. Just a little bit of just just low energy, shit to bed kind of performance. Mm. Just, oh yeah, we've just turned up to Brisbane and expected to blow them out of the water because that's what we've done the last seven games against them. And it hasn't kind of worked out like that. Uh, it's pretty weak performances from most of the team and support crew. Um, it was a trash game to watch. So credit to Brisbane as well. You know, they, I think they wanted it more and they played a bit harder. Um, but yeah, man, it was a tough game to watch, especially knowing the score and having to watch it back. And you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you, I was, uh, was going to come on here and say, hey, fess up. How much of that game did you watch? I watched the first quarter. I watched half the second quarter and I watched most of the fourth quarter. And I was just like, thank God I didn't watch the third quarter for that six minute stretch of one point. Yeah, so it's I'll... just. But <sighs> the thing is, like, it's 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 a twofold sort of thing. Like, it's it's hard to watch when you're watching, knowing how good this team could be doing certain things. Yeah, exactly. The and other, it's just... But the other part of it is, like, we're at, we've got so many wins now that you kind of lose games, and you're just like, eh, we're we're twelve and four, we're eleven and three, we're three and you know, thirteen and four. Who cares? Like, you it, know what I mean? It is a who cares until Perth kind of sneak up and take over. We need to get that home final, I think, because it's going to be very hard to travel to Perth to win any kind of series against them. So that's that's what I'm rooting for. We should get the easy wins. If we take a hard loss to, to Perth or or to uh, you know Melbourne, potentially, then it's you know it's okay. But uh, we should be getting those easy wins against Brisbane. But uh, yeah, it was not a great game. We played pretty well. Um, kick it it's actually having a fairly good season you know I think yeah. he's uh, he's heating up and shooting the ball well and we've seen the post kick it come back out which you know more than happy for him to just tuck that away but it seemed to it seemed to be working um, but yeah you know, in this game he played pretty well in Brisbane where played well and Tate had a, a fairly standard game quiet by his kind of night standards but let's let's talk about the elephant in the room here and Andrew Bogut just being completely beta male at the moment not not really taking it too busy tweeting about what's happening in the bushfires and not focusing on basketball he's just not he's not pro- producing for, he's, for the M- mvp he was last year and just the behemoth it's just like at some stage you need to take this over and just start working but he doesn't seem to be doing anything very slow like he's a step slower than last year even so I'm thinking, I'm I'm wondering how much of this is like rope dope Like, it's just like, I oh, just take it easy on the season. And I'll, I'll bring it out in the finals. Knowing like this team's a lot better than it was last season. Like they, we've got a better coach, scheming better. We've got better players. We've got like a, a system that do, not necessarily 
fits Bogut in. Like he, he doesn't really fit into this system. Like he, he doesn't have a post game defending the rim. He doesn't really need to do that as much anymore. Like it doesn't seem like we're funneling guys into him to just block shots anymore. Seems he's having to do a lot more, like get exposed, having to come out to the perimeter. It almost feels like, and I'm completely speculating, but it's like Will Weave is just like, you're just going to have to step out. Like you're just going to have to do it. And he's yeah. like, but, but I can't, you know? Yeah. And then instead of going, oh, okay, well, we'll we'll change the whole defense so that you don't have to step out and we'll we'll find a way to defend this. It sounds like Will Weave is just kind of going, you're just going to have to do it and we're not going to change it. So it is what it is. And I, I noticed in this Brisbane game to tie it back, even when Kikert was out there, he wasn't stepping up either. And they were they were kind of torching us a little bit on those line drives, a little bit on the, uh, like, letting Will Magne. Like, Will Magne, I said in the previous episode, like, watch out for him, his quality young big man, shooting three ball superbly. And that's that, that big man that shoots the three ball that we have, you know, a lot of trouble with this season because we've got basically Bogut, who isn't in the best form. I don't know, like, I wasn't, pre- I'm not prepared to have this conversation yet, I think after this season is where we have the conversation where what's going on with Bogut? Like I look at him and I just think he doesn't need to do it yet. Like there's enough of this team to go around at the moment, enough to yeah. sort of. It's, it seems like in certain runs he doesn't need to do it, but then in certain games he needs to step up and just take over and like, oh, yeah, there's that flash. Because he played pretty well in the Aussie Boomer series in the World Cup and he had flashes of good offensive, but his offense has just kind of seemed to, to really dry up. And Offense is one of those things is you have to actually be producing in order to produce and continue to produce. And that's why Casper is shooting at 29% but still scoring a high volume. You've got to keep going in order to produce. And he's not even doing that. Very low volume. We're not hitting double digits. You know, we're not getting the same blocks, the rebounds. And I know we're playing less minutes and he's playing less of a role, but it's kind of like that's fine in games where it's trash time after 20 minutes and you know you've got this in the bag. Play him for 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. But there's certain games especially in that Brisbane game where you want him in the, on the court for 35 minutes, really, you know, tightening things up and playing down low. Um, and we, we're just not seeing that. We're seeing a lot of kick it, uh, playing the five. And I'm, which I'm kind of ha- okay with that when he's in this kind of form, though. I am okay with that when he's in this kind of form uh, because his offensive production masks his defensive lack of production. He's actually been pretty good defensively. I don't know about what we were seeing. He's one of the three best defensive centers in the comp. I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Adam. Will um, uh, you know. I think maybe you meant bench bench centers, but yeah, one of the one of the three or four best. I st- I don't know if his defense has been pretty good. I think his defense has been acceptable. I think his defense has been good in the sense that he does the right thing pretty much every play and still gets foul calls. Like he's literally <laughs> hands go directly in the air and he steps in front of the player or steps back and still gets called for a foul. So it's kind of like he's doing the defensive playbook really well, but not getting the recognition by the referees. And we have to have a rant about the referees in every game now because... Yeah, it's <laughs> it's getting bad. I've watched a lot of the other games this season. Every game, it's there's something in a game where you're just like, really, this? like, And this and Brisbane even, game in particular, there was a couple of, uh, couple of unsportsmanlike fouls that you're just like, really? Like unsportsmanlike foul? It's that Hunter screen, like, yeah, solid, pretty solid screen. And, you know, we're pretty biased. I was looking at that just going, it's not unsportsmanlike. Like, there wasn't bows thrown. There wasn't, like, any malice in that. It was just a hard screen. Might have lent into it a little bit. It's an illegal screen, but I'm, I didn't see any unsportsmanlike in that. Even when Andrew Gaze is talking on the telecast going, hmm, there's this home cooking that we've seen from game to game. It's like, even when, you know, the commentators are saying, yeah, the home teams are getting way more calls than they should be. Uh, it's, do do it's, we get that, though? I don't think we get that. Yeah, no, we've had it a couple. We didn't get it that um, the, the the Perth game. We didn't get it the Perth game. Like we've had it uh, maybe one or two times this season where... We had it more than last season. Last season, Jerome Randall would just get tackled and be like, yeah, no call. <laughs> and someone would just drive a truck into the arena just over him, like <laughs> burn out in the corner. <laughs> drive out of the arena and they'd be like, yeah, no, fair play, mate, fair play. Fair play, fair play, you yeah. know, and then you know, bogey down the other, oh, it's sportsman like, you flicked him. And it's just like, it, it was, yeah, I don't know, there's, there's a bit of a target on McKinn's back, I think. I don't know for what reason, but these refs, in general, you just catch them ball watching and then making off the play calls, off the ball calls. And you're like, no, no, that was not a, a you know, there's so many charge fouls or... <sighs> Don't don't get me started. 
there was two <laughs> at the end of this game, like real game deciding ones too. Whereas, and there was one with Sobi where, shout out to Sobi, like looking like David Spade's younger brother with a shit haircut. What's up with that? <laughs> um, he had one where he's like scampering and just fall like goes down and then they're like oh what great defense by Sobi and they show the replay in slow-mo and his feet are like scampering like this yeah. and you're like I-, I don't see anyone set there that's not great defense that's just probably a no either a no call or a bl- like if there's contact it's a blocking foul like like why would give it like it's just because JT's got 150 pounds on a lot of these guys and when he puts his ass into you you go flying and it's like yes that's basketball if you can't handle him putting his ass into you like too bad. You fall on the floor, yeah. he dunks all over you. Thanks. But these fucking offensive fouls, man, it's killing me. And it's it's not just this game. It's not just JT and it's not just the Kings. Like, it's no, across it's the league, game. man. It's in all the games now where it's, it's, it's we're rewarding. Like, we're, we're rewarding this downhill scampering as good defense. And I'm like, no, you didn't get in front of the guy. You just kind of scampered there. You weren't set that's not a foul or it's like, it's just a no call or a nothing type of thing. There's no need to be rewarding defensive players that can't get their feet set properly. Like that's what I, f- that's the way I feel about it. Like yeah. we should be rewarding these guys who are getting to the hoop, having a step on your defender and not just being like, Oh, he kind of went flying. So it's an illegal screen, you know? Oh, it's a um, offensive foul. The other one was that cooks unsportsman like where he put his elbow, I think into wasn't brawn was singular. I think, and um, I didn't think, like, obviously, okay, his elbow hit his head. Like, you go, okay, yeah, fair enough. But I didn't think that was unsportsmanlike. Like, I didn't see him, like, making any kind of, like, all he was doing was trying to get into the set position and his arm was going up. And, like, shit, like, that was kind of a bit of a sketchy screen on the back screen. He was kind of at a weird angle. I'm like, they're the kind of dangerous plays, man, that people get hurt. Like, people cop an elbow in the head because you're not really defending the play properly. You can't really say much about a guy like having to get his elbow like oh sorry sorry ref like i've got another guy's blood on my elbow i'll have to go off for a blood rule you can't really turn around and go oh that's not a good call by the ref like fair enough you go okay yeah it's a hard foul elbow to the head no worries but unsportsmanlike like what are, yeah, unsportsmanlike, what are we doing here? yeah but the unsportsmanlike in in fever is excessive contact or contact leading to injury mm. and so it doesn't matter even if it's if it's a hard foul if there's an elbow and it draws blood it's excessive contact or contact leading to injury is an unsportsman like automatically. And that's that's a stupid rule because that just breeds fucking wooziness. It breeds woozy basketball. Well, it, it does because... It's, but it, it breeds... Kind of like, like it makes you try and get in these positions that you get hurt. And that's what like this, char- this charge stuff comes from that. Like I'm just going to scamper into this position. Oh, I've, I fell over. It's like that's not good defense. Like no. we should be stopping the rewarding of this sort of a foul. And you didn't get into good defensive stance. You weren't there. So we won't give you a foul for that. And then people will stop doing it. Like I just, it's happening too much in my opinion, but. It's also because people are, you know, leading with the shoulder because defenders aren't getting set. So if they're not getting set, it's kind of that weird ruling is that they're not calling it a, uh, um, they're not calling it, they're taking a charge. They're, ta- they're saying that they're, they you know illegally it's illegal contact with the shoulder but that's because they're moving across the uh, across the lane mm. like that guy's going for the lane you're going to hit his shoulder at any point when you're moving across it that's not proper defense that's just you not getting set and getting in front of your mat exactly like you said and it's annoying it's happening in the nba more as well and it annoys me to no extent yeah, in the NBA. Me. it's just it's a it's an epidemic it's a Oh, it's good hustle. And it's like, no, it's not. Stop no, stop rewarding not. this. And Shane Hill, shout out to Shane Hill. Stop saying that's good defense because it's not good defense. <laughs> um, the other thing too, on the flip side of that, Hodgson had a couple of dodgy fouls and he was he was uh, sitting on the pine pretty quick. Lamar Patterson had a little bit of foul trouble. Again, these guys get five fouls. Can we stop? Like, we don't need these really tight calls on these guys. Like, I, I get it. And I want to see a game refereed properly, but we don't need like the best players on each team. It's just like, oh, you minorly touched him. That's a foul. By the letter of the law, that's a foul, Andrew. And you're like, do we need this, man? We don't need this. Like, stop it. Yeah. Um, so he had, he had a little bit of foul trouble. Patterson had some foul trouble. Um, the commentator said that Brisbane played well in this game, but I don't. Like Will Magne played like phenomenally well. Like he's going to be a prospect as well. I think he's only nineteen, 
um, a possibility that he might go over to the US and play some G League at the very least. I'd like to see him do that. He can shoot a three ball, but I don't think Brisbane really played that well. I don't think Brisbane really play any well at any time. They just kind of pull out wins. If you look at this box score, like Jason Kadi again, two of eight from three, he had his, oh, Jason Kadi, here he comes. And then it's like two of eight. You know, he had eight points on the night. Braun had seven points, a couple of timely buckets. Uh, and then you look at the rest of this lineup, Sobey, three of 15, like not a good night. Patterson, six of 12, and eh, not too, not the greatest night. Glidden, obviously, you know, from the back from the wilderness, just to, just comes out of nowhere, plays 28 minutes, 13 points, four of four, not high volume scoring, but timely buckets. But really on the night, Will Magne, shout out to him, man. He played f- just phenomenally well. And being 13 and four now, it's just kind of easy to just go, well played, sir, well played. We'll take the L, <laughs> well played. Yes, it was uh, it was good to see another big man put it up there, and especially after you know our Harry Froling disappointment this year. Yeah, he's been poor, man. Just poor to watch. After yes, his I ads, have... like his run of ads as well, like his advertisements, where he's like, "I'm I'm sitting on the bench in Adelaide's change rooms. I'm going to make a difference here." And you're just like, "Really? Okay, sure." <laughs> um, turn it around to the Kings. Casper Ware had a great night, twenty six points again carried us towards the end of this game but nobody in this team shot the three ball well at all and there was a Surely crazy Bruce. crazy just oh okay yeah daniel could get three or four but there was just a crazy amount of just passing out of drives and then dudes just jacking up shots and you're like no no stop it brad newley a couple where you're just like yeah put that on the floor no don't shoot a three newels like what are you doing like put that on the floor and get to the hoop uh, kick it obviously he had a pretty good night 12 points jt again five of seven really efficient just so powerful at the rim I, it annoys me because like ha- watching the warriors have these games where you're just like just just put the ball on the floor get to the hoop go up and just stuff you the ball and like your whole team put everyone through the hoop stop jacking up threes please can we just stop it and Felt myself sort of all through this game just going, can we just stop jacking up threes? Like, stop. Like, stop. He's turned into Brisbane. And it was crazy. 18 of, uh, what did we end up? 8 of 36. Oof. Oh, that's that's Ugh. like watching the Rockets. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, what is that? 22%. And, and in a game, we shot 61% from two as well. Like, how much does that just make you go, all right, like these guys were just jacking up a crazy amount of like early shot clocks and that led to some transition stuff for the bullets. I, was, I don't know why I was going to call them the breakers then. Uh, did we see anything else? I thought Cooks played quite well, even though he didn't score that well. Um, Deshaun Taylor, look, another game where you're just like, don't think he fits. Um, turned it around against the Phoenix, which was which was pretty, pretty good. We'll get to that. Brad Newley was pretty poor in this game. Uh, it's I don't like Newley's weird. Like if if Newley isn't hitting shots, like it's like he just takes a step back, and then you're like, no, no, no we need you to take the ball and just get to the hole. Exactly, you're, Brad. You're six foot seven. You need to just run downhill and you know get to the foul, get a couple of stops, slow the play down, and you know, get to the line. Even though you're shooting seventy percent, whatever. 60% or whatever it is. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's check that. Because I think his free throw shooting is actually not too bad. 82% this season. Wow. Maybe that I might have my stats, you stats wrong there. You have to get to the line, yeah. Mr. Newley. That's, you should be getting downhill, man. That, the three ball's been good this year, but we don't, we don't need high click. We just need you to get down down the hill to pick up, lay it in, and some other ones. Mm. That's what we need, we need from old Brad. And... Uh, I have to say in that Southeast Melbourne game, that's exactly what he did. It seems like they have these games where they just lose their way and then they lose and they're like, oh, shit, we better win. And they come out, they just blast the opponents the next week. So it's good to see that, but they need to put a good run of three or four games now where they're blasting their opponents left, right, and center. That'd be uh, good to watch. Yeah, that is correct, as the NBL has Brad Newley at 83%. So shout out to Brad Newley upping his free throw percentage. It's phenomenal. Because I think, what was he shooting at, like 50, 60% or something last season? Something just dreadful. And y- you're right. Like, they get trapped in this mindset of, like, we can just keep jack our way out of these games. Like, just jack our way out of that. Whereas, uh, um, you know, it's getting too many games into the season to just go, can we now just get to the hole and get our way out of these games? Like, 
Mm. Is how many games do we have to see now where you're just like, oh, we jacked up a bunch of shots and lost because we missed. Like, how many times have we had these games where we went to the hole a lot? Like, spoiler alert for the Southeast Melbourne, we went to the hole heaps. We, we won. How good was this? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, definitely. All right, um, let's... Uh, yeah, we'll move on to the Southeast Melbourne game. Let's do 3 two, one for that. For that oh, uh, 3 two, one. Oh, get in early. Okay. Mix it up a little bit. We'll mix it up a little bit. Um, I haven't written the thing down. Let me just get to that. Uh, round 12, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. First game was Brisbane. What do you got for me? Oh, I've got to go three, Casper Ware. Yep. Definitely. Two, kick it. Kicks. One, Tate. Yeah, it's basically like you're looking at the box score and going, yeah, three three high scorers in the thing. I went kick it and I'll go kick it and Tate as well. Same thing. Uh, yeah, all right, move on to the Southeast Melbourne at home, a 110-98 win against the phoenix uh this is a there was a game again robertson was in foul trouble early um basically sat pretty much almost yeah but there were silly fouls they were they weren't little touches they were silly fouls holding guys off off the ball one was like he ran in to kick it that was just like most games you won't call that but they just called that you know yeah like most games you're just like eh. but this they just seem to like again they just seem to call these Nothing fouls, and then you've got guys in foul trouble. You got to manage the game. You got to like, oh no, like Robinson's off the court, you know. And you're just like, oh, stop. Some home, home cooking foul trouble, but yeah, right there. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a good day. I mean, we have to talk about Deshaun Taylor this game because he went from that slide of doo doo up to, ooh, this guy's actually the spark plug and can get things done. And if you can play at that level every game, you know. Yeah, look good defensively too. I think he he's yeah. his main sort of like where he might offer something for this team is on the defensive end. I feel like sometimes he plays a little bit out of control, a little bit um, loses his man. But when he's locked in on defense and on a guy like, admittedly, on a guy like Kyle Adnam, who had to play a lot of minutes in this game, he ended up playing 23 minutes, scoring 24 points. He had a pretty good game against this, but like we can just throw size guys at him. And uh, Ty Wesley is another one of their main scorers. He had seven points, which wasn't, wasn't great as well. He was a, bit, a little bit frustrated by the amount of length that we have. Xavier Cooks, man, like he was f- like really, really good defensively in this game. It was, it was just again where you look at this team and go, oh sweet, another six sort of six eight, six nine Moller type guy. That's yeah. that's really good to have. His offense, you know, he's not going to give you like a whole array of great offense. He can kind of get to the hole a little bit, drive and pass um, the three ball. He still looks a bit hesitant to shoot that three ball. He's over three. In this game, I think he had two against... Uh, did he have like, one of two against Brisbane? He doesn't want to shoot the three, but you can see it in him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he played really well. Uh, Shawnee Bruce, Big Balls Bruce was really good. He had 12 points. Um, and then you look at Casper Ware on a night where... You know, what, like... He, he, he didn't really play that well and you just see all oh, right he just takes a step back ends up with seven assists you know four of seven from two only shoots three threes that's where we're just like right get to the hole and start diamond you guys up that's that's the way yeah. to do it some other guys were on fire in taylor and kick it and mm. that's what you need to do you need to get the ball in their hands but it, i think that's the the smarts of casper whereas whereas jerome randall will just keep shooting and jacking and shooting and jacking and that's where it was like okay i know i'm not going to go into physical I'm just going to try and shoot my way out of this, and you know maybe Casper Ware at some stage is is, is brought back to earth if, if other players are pretty hot. He's he's just facilitating, um, and that's that was good to see. And I think you know everyone had a good rebound game. Everyone played really well. I don't think there was a player on that team that didn't play well. Bogut played meagerly, played good for the minutes that he did, but he only really, 17 minutes in this game. It's just, I he's just I two theories, man. They're, they're wrapping him in cotton wool and just making sure he's right for the finals, or they're just like, you have to just play like an all round center. We're not just going to change the scheme for you. Step out, or you don't play because, if, like, it's it's hard to say. But a few of these times we've played this, like, a few of these runs we've been on and teams we've beaten, we've just been like, Boga hasn't been a feature, and now like our small lineup is, you know, winning games for us. So, how, yeah. like, what do you do? Uh, that lineup with Cooks at the five was just like this lineup was good. Mm. And JT, like uh, Me- Southeast Melbourne, don't really have big men. Like Dane Pino, was nah. I saying it to you last, uh, like Monday night? 
Like they need a guy who sets bone crushing screens for Robertson, Southeast Melbourne. Pano kind of does well. that, but not really. And then you look at Pano, like he's kind of like a six out of ten all round rather than he's really good at one thing and this is what you can throw at oppos- the opposition. He's kind of just tries hard at everything, you know what I mean? He's, he's a lively young character. What who they need to sign in the off season is Mangok Matiang. Mm. That he would set some bone crushing screens and be that just dunk spot specialist. That's that's yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ben Madgen, he played all right. He had he hit a three sort of late on in that again, like the same thing as that last game where you're just like Ben Madgen does nothing all game and then hits a three and you're just like go away, Ben Madgen. <laughs> but it's hard, man. I, it's so hard to watch him just take L's against us too because of like how good he was for the Sydney and how much you like know, Sydney's in his heart. It's where he started his career. It's just like oh, take the L though, buddy. You know, we've got, we're, we're going to win this championship. We've got to win this championship. What do you think about Mitch Creek? We, we were very, very obviously letting him shoot jumpers in this game. We were. And he's a, he's a good scorer. He's a good all-around player, man. Like, he's he's definitely going to be in that MVP talk race. But again, he plays like, what, 36 minutes a game? I'll just check that. Yeah, just talk while I check that. Yeah, 36 minutes a game. Um, he, kind of his focal point is that scrapper is just like, oh, Robertson's missed it a couple in a row. Where do we go? Oh, we're going to Creek. And so Creek kind of gets in a bit of a down low or plays it in off the glass. Or, you know, because Ben Madgen really hasn't been a go-to scorer this whole season for them. So he's kind of like, he's like the pick it up. Okay, they haven't really got a good, strong rebounder as well. It's like left to Creek. He's kind of that undersized four that he's playing at as well. Same as Tate. So it, it, that matchup is actually quite fascinating and interesting to, to watch. And I think they, they complement each other well in terms of matchup, and it's pretty even. Um, but I think Creek's probably the better pure scorer. But we were very obviously gapping him, like letting him shoot jumpers yeah. very early on, letting him shoot, disrespect him on threes. And I think that's the way you play him. You don't let him get to the, the cup. You don't let him get any uh, action sort mm. of going towards the hoop. That's where you can see that. Like, his jumper's not super solid like you're not looking at it going yeah it's like it's fairly reliable and you're like okay you shoot shoot one or two i don't mind that but i think if you if you kind of close it like we closed off ty wesley really well in this game we made pano trying to try to make something happen and then ben Madgen was kind of just a bit of a spot-up shooter and then a lot of adnam having a run point um for he ended up with four assists 24 points not a bad night for him but again we saw it a lot last year like it's fool's gold his offense is just kind of fool's gold um defensive end you can really get to him and we ran up the score mitch creek playing 34.6 minutes a game that's a lot of minutes man it is it's kind of bogey minutes last year you just got to think if, if if he goes down for any length of time that team is just is gone here's a stat that'll blow your mind the top 10 minutes not a single king is in the top 10 for minutes. You have to yeah. go all the way down to 29 minutes a game for Casper Ware and then 27 for Jay Sean Tate. So I wonder if this is a uh, a little uh, Will Weaver rope-a-dope strategy to just keep everyone fresh for the playoffs. Could be. Or could just be his just general strategy of how to maximise team, maximise guys' minutes off the bench if someone goes down so you actually have... Um, because you've got to think that a lot of these teams are just one player away from losing a whole ton of games. Yeah, I think we're, we're pretty deep too, eh? Like it's not mm. not exactly. We, we've got a pretty shallow... Uh, we, we don't have a shallow roster and we've got a lot of scheme too, like scheme guys. It's not like we have, oh, well, next guy ups, you know, Pano, next guy yeah. ups, Adnam, Adnam, next guy ups. Like we've got a lot of like, oh, we can throw this line up and then we throw this line up and then we move to this line up. It's a lot chunks of dudes that I don't think these other teams really have chunks of guys to throw out there. It's a shame we didn't see Danger Kuth at all. I think that would have been a good matchup at times. Did he end up playing any minutes in this game? Any, yes. not even any, um, any trash time. Yeah, no. garbage time. And then Terry Armstrong, I don't think he's played many minutes for them. There's their next star. Um, but yeah, I, I think all in all, Daniel Kuth played really well too. Like he, he's just quietly had a couple of couple of really really solid games um helping on the defensive end plus 20 highest plus minus on the knights 18 points seven of ten from the field three of six from two and then four of four from three to go with taylor's five of six from three 
Uh, knew he was jacking him up, one of five from three. And then Diddy, should we talk quickly just about Diddy? Looks a bit, and his injury too. Like he, he looked like just, he blew out a calf or something there going up for a rebound. Looks very tentative. He just doesn't look like the same. He looks like he's nursing injuries and he's just like, he's just playing through. He just doesn't look like the same dude we saw preseason at all. Looks and, like he's uh, on for the ride, eh? Like, oh, just know. just go with the flow. You know what I mean? Like it started out like he was taking the ball, making things happen, really explosive really on a flyer and then that injury a little sort of rocky start to the season you know that big breakout game since then it's just been a little bit like not the personality we saw like i don't know if it's if it's a you know a conclusion to go a bit worried about him like or we're just seeing that in the eye of the storm just the way he plays like maybe he's like i don't want to get injured i don't want to like He's had some cramp troubles too, and he obviously had that calf problem at the end of this game. I don't know, man. I'm I'm a little bit like not worried, but at the same time, just like Oof, I don't know what's going on there. But at the same time, you're sitting there just going, man, he could just be one and done straight out of here back to the NBA. And it's like, yeah, what's, what was the point of it all anyway? He was just here to have a little bit of fun, learn some English. But I still I still maintain that he looks like a guy that can barely speak English out there. You know, like, if, does yeah. it feel like that to you? Like, it's yeah. like... It looks a bit lost in translation. Like, oh, I was sometimes. here. I was here. Oh, oh, sorry, boys. Like, and in an elite team, yeah, well, we're not an elite team, but in an elite team, it's like, you know, like, it's just a half a second there that you're like, oh, you're not in the right spot. You're not here. You're not there. But it's not necessarily like Tugs last year where it was like, Tugs, 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 <laughs> beep, so, sub siren and his Tugs just leaves. And you just don't see him again. And you're just like, oh, man, gazy. Gazy, come on, mate. Yeah, but that was Gaze. That was Gaze's wheeling and dealing and scheming and just <laughs> terrible. Admittedly, I like him as a commentator, man. He's very yeah, interesting. He's a great, great commentator. Great to. commentator. Because he's he's been on both sides of the bench. Because it's, it's good to see his insights. But yeah, man, terrible coach. Great commentator. Stay commentating. That's where you belong, Gaze. Uh, belong, Gaze. All right. Do we need to go through any more from the Southeast Melbourne game? No, it was a good win, and uh, good win. We'll, we'll go through three to one, I think. Yeah, three to one for this game. What do you got? Three kick it. You got to go past. Can't go past kick it. Yeah, I went two, kick it as well. Two to Sean Taylor. DT. I think just def- I mean offensively, some of those that that ridiculous little trick shot that he hit as well was great. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Uh, he actually had like a couple of really well designed buckets too, where there was there was one where. I think he had one off a like a steal, like a crazy Jay Sean Tate dived on the ground steal. And then instead of like getting to the hole, he tossed it out to Taylor who shot a three and like made the three. Like they're they're the real they're probably the most they give you the most like adrenaline rush, those threes, where mm-hmm. you're just like, it's in transition, I got a three wide open, bang, you hit the three and you go, Yeah, sweet. Um a couple of like really well designed, like a pick and then sort of swing the ball out to Taylor in the corner. He hit a couple of those. So he played really well. Shout out, shout out to him. And then you one point, sorry. Yes, that would go to Xavier Cooks. I think he had a fucking really good game. Um, defensively, he was just, you know, everywhere and crashed the offensive boards much harder in this game, which was good to see as well. And that's, uh, that's his first point. So I'm going to have to put him on the uh, leaderboard. He's not on the leaderboard. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to do that. It's my next next task. Uh, so should we go to some predictions now for the the monster round that's coming up? Wait, what are your three, two, one? Oh, I went nah, same. Kick it, Deshaun Taylor and Cooks. Sorry. What did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, cool. Just in my uh, own, I, in my own head, I didn't didn't say that or anything to anyone. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm the master and the authoritarian. Um, yeah, monster round. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games in this round. A Christmas. Just frenzy of basketball. Frenzy of buckets. Buckets frenzy. Hopefully it's a buckets frenzy. Uh, what do we got? First game, we have Cairns in Melbourne. I'm going to go to Cairns. Cairns. You're riding that Cairns train, man. Bugger it. I'm going to go Cairns. I said in one of those episodes I was riding the 36ers train and then I tipped against them, but then they ended up losing to the Taipans anyway. I'm going Melbourne at home. Breakers at the Bullets. The Breakers have been playing well. I don't know. They like they get. Uh, I'm gonna say one. Bullets. You're gonna say oh Scotty Hobbs. No, I'm gonna get Breakers. 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 
Uh, at home, Brisbane. I'm going to go Brisbane. Will Magne is going to have another blinder. My tips last week were so bad. <laughs> it's just, it was horrible. Absolute bloodbath. But I think it was a bloodbath. There was just some weird, weird games last round, like mm. guys losing at home and then just bricking games out of nowhere. Just like, what? Uh, Wildcats at the Kings is the first one of our doubleheader. Oh, the Kings. Kings, yeah. Oops. Kings. Kings. And then Hawks at the Phoenix. 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 It's a wizard. We're doing a wizard. <laughs> Some of the play names. Uh, Phoenix. This is 12. We're going to do a 12. Uh, breakers at 36ers. 36 is because it's a one game week for them. Ooh, pulling out the uh, knowledge. Yeah, I'm going 36 as well. Bullets at United. Uh, just, United. United. Yeah, Bullets at United. 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 Yeah, I'll go United as well. The Kings at the Hawks on New Year's Eve. Kings. Yeah, I think we'll. Uh, that's That feels like a game where we're just going to go in there and the Hawks are going to go, oh, Toddy Blanchfield, 28 points. Uh, Emmett Nash shoots 12 threes. Yeah, man. He's been shooting the ball. Like, actually, like, scoring the ball is weird. Like, you're watching it just going, oh, this is weird. He had a game the other night where he was just, just jacking up shots from everywhere. I was like, what's going on, Emmett? Someone's giving him a shot of pep. Uh, Southeast Melbourne at the Taipans. I think it's Taipans. It's a tough. Tough game. It was squeaked by him in the last game, the old uh, Phoenix. Okay, Phoenix. Phoenix. And then Wildcats at 36 is to end a crazy, crazy round of basketball. Wildcats. The Cats. I'll go Cats also. And that is the end of predictions. So should we do any uh, preview? Preview's going to be, it's going to be a tough game against the Wildcats. Um, I think they've just got to play play over those screens. I, I think maybe you even start Deshaun Taylor and just get him to stick to Cotton. I think get that kind of young, enthusiastic, he can give you that defensive edge you start in. I mean, where's good, but I think you're going to need Deshaun Taylor because Nick Kay can set a bone-crushing screen and you're going to need a, a really a dude that can fight around that because that is your, your biggest issue and then have someone like a Lizardo on a Tariq White, and then the rest of it will just kind of fall into place. I think we played the Wildcats really well in the second half of that game, but after the first half scoring 70 points, it was kind of good yeah. game, game over. Um, but really, they just need to fight on that downhill, that high pick downhill screen, get around it and start putting them off. Because yes. just gonna, it's, yeah. it's just going to be it's gonna be three scorers. It's going to be Steindl. Oh, Steindl, probably your, your bench score is going to be K. Tariq White and, and Cotton. So you know what to do and you can almost double team and leave Damian Martin fucking wide open. If Yeah, I think that's a lot of teams are doing that. They're basically letting Martin try and score. He, he knocks down one of four and, you know, sometimes you leave him open, he might hit a couple. But I think the like the way they play it in Perth with Cotton just like blazing around those screens, like almost, you know, having two or three body, like arm lengths away from his screener. Yeah. They're going to try that again. We're going to have to just go, right, plant a flag. This is what we're going to do to counter this because if it comes finals time, this is what we're going to have to do to counter these things. And I don't know if it's going to be Bogut stepping up, man. Like he hasn't, like even in the in the uh, Southeast Melbourne game, he was chasing guys around a little bit more in that game and it just looked like, just like you're old, man. <laughs> like You can barely move. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I said when this first sort of popped up i think it was a couple of weeks before we had that game against perth like we, we got to pull out some sort of like wing wing collapse scheme where we, like we run a lot of horns action where only wear and bogut move and you just like cool. guys like we can have you know guys crossing under the bucket we can have guys that come back out around but there's been a little bit too much just you guys go and stand in the corner like it's newly and tate in the corner and just like, what's the point of that? They're both two guys that you're just like, I don't want you shooting in the corner. Like, yeah. really, even kick it, I don't want shooting in the corner. I'd rather him have him trailing at that ten o'clock spot. Like, so I don't know. Like, I, I'd, I'd try and get some more moving in there. I'd try and have JT sort of stunt across and really cover those um, 
cotton down screens like that's going to be the biggest thing and then if white gets hot you kind of live with that we don't really have a wing that can guard or like a forward who can guard white and then if cotton tries to switch it up he's going to have to go to hunt a lot like lobbing for hunt or like diming inside for hunt he's not that great around the rim that might be where we can sort of get away with you know having bogut stay home but at the same time there's been a lot of bogut where he just oh that's my guy sorry boys and you're like he didn't even like react to that. Like last year, yeah. I can I can understand. Oh, re- he reacted. He was late. Couldn't get there. I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that's all good, man. You tried. You were over there. It was just it, it broke down. But there's been a few yeah. where he just looks at a guy and just goes, oh yeah, that's my bad. Sorry. And you're just like, oof, really? Like, you know, you just left Casper where just having a defender big there. Like, what are you doing, man? Like basic stuff where he's known for defensively being a really high level defensive guy. So I think it'll be an interesting context. We're at, we're at home. Our game against them at home. I, I said it was a better representation of where the two teams are at. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was kind of a Diddy just, just going absolutely ham type of game where yeah. did that have a little bit of an effect on it? I don't know in the form that he's in. Can we just see, and if he's even fit, like, you know. Yeah, he may be out for this game. No, I'm, I'd definitely put a past. I wouldn't put a past to Sean Taylor playing after the last game and even starting. I mean, he's... He's proven himself on the defensive end to be that pest that could potentially, you know, knock Cotton off his game. And that's all you really need to do is knock Cotton off, off his game. And they really have nothing outside that. So who do you reckon we'll go to if we don't have Lazada? Cooks? I think it's... No, nah, it's, a, it's a Deshaun Taylor playing the, the two. Where one, you, know, you could probably play um, Cooks at the three as an oversized three and then Jay Sean Tate at four and Bogut at five. Well, you have you got Newley. Newley's always there. He's in the starting lineup. That's yeah, really. Newley, free, but I, I would I would definitely try and put Cooks more on Tariq White and have him defensively match up with Tariq White. I think Newley's probably just a little bit old. Tariq White's got a little bit more sparks in his book. Mm. Um, but yeah, this isn't going to be a downhill kind of game. It's going to be a, a shooters game and letting letting Bogut have to get more involved offensively uh, to to really win this game. I think. Is it going to be another one where you just, like, if it was me and I had the, you know, the where Bogut's game's at, I don't know if I'd really want to be be like, I want to show everyone that I can't defend pick and roll or I'm going to try and defend pick and roll and I'm going to struggle at it and look like a tool. Mm. You know what I mean? So maybe there's a little bit of that as well where you're like, don't show everyone that this guy can't defend pick and roll just yet, even though we saw it against Perth. You know what I mean? Like everyone's gonna be looking at that, going, "Let's see what Bogut like. How's Bogut gonna react? Is he, is he gonna step up? What's he gonna do?" So that'll be interesting. And then the Hawks. What do you what do we reckon about the this? Uh, that'll Hawks be a tight, team? that'll be that'll, that'll be a tight game. I think personally, uh, New Year's Eve. I reckon half the Sydney team will be in party mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think that'll be a tighter game than most people think. I think the Hawks have got a bit of fight left in them. The young guns have seemed to have taken over and, and being more of that team unit instead of the Lamelo Ball experience. So it'll be an interesting game to see, but we should win comfortably. We should. On paper, we definitely should win that. But what, like, this Illawarra team kind of has the, th- the threatening to get hot thing. The and Jason Kadeem experience. Yes, yeah, the the JC uh, threaten. I'm threatening boys hot mode. And like a few times, Blanchfield. Did who they beat the other night? They beat someone the other night, unexpectedly. Was it the tie? I got it on my uh, predictions here. What? Who was it? Yeah, it was the Thirty Sixers, and they they beat the Thirty Sixers basically by Blanchfield getting hot. Sunday Jetch has been really, really good. Like a candidate mm-hmm. for most improved or rookie of the year. I think he was in the league last year, wasn't he? I don't don't think so. I don't know, but he's been really, really good for them. Like underrated, sort of stepped up when Lamella Ball went down. Blanchfield, like they don't dial up enough for Blanchfield. Like you, you'll get hot, and you just like Blanchfield's hot. Like where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And they're just like, here's Ogilvy in the post. Here's Detch will just shoot a jumper. Here's you know, they'll dial one up for Conrad, and you're like Blanchfield, like get it to Blanchfield. So I wonder, you know, he can get hot. Conrad can get hot. They've got, uh, I think Anderson's injured as well. He's been a little bit of a bad loss. I don't know how bad a loss can be when you're four and 12. Um, but he, you know, he's a guy that gets in the cracks that we leave. Uh, I just don't know if they've got any anyone else really that gets in the cracks that we have 
No, a I don't think so. Apart I, from like a matchup style, like oh, we the, we we duked it out and they won type of thing. I'd like to see Emmett Ah uh, get into a little bit more of the shooting, see that experience. Yeah, he just looks so afraid until these last couple of games where you just seen him shoot jumpers. Mm. He's got that real Joe Ingles style, like angled style jumper too. Yeah. He loves loves holding the ball on the side. Um, and that's probably about it. It's almost Christmas time, and that's it. Ring in the Christmas. Yeah, ring in the Christmas. Our first Christmas with young young ones. So it's going to be interesting to wake up tomorrow and have to do all that. Yep. But I am looking <laughs> forward to it. And then the basketball is back on Boxing Day. I believe Melbourne are playing on Boxing Day, and then Friday. Saturday, rather. Friday. Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. 28th. 5.30. Where's it going? Where yeah, we're going? Going? we're going to try and go to that game. All right. So anything else we need to plug? Anything else we need to say? That's it, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. Yes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Another Christmas in the books. And we will see you guys next time. Oh, the king's out. Take it easy, everyone. See you.